Welcome back to another exciting edition of SVS Countermeasures Training Training Video Training Series. And this one is going to be a segment or a bunch of modules of training basically on the x-ray. We're going to break down specific things that you need to know about the x-ray to include specific thread items and how they respond in the x-ray machine. And this first one we're actually going to talk about emulsion explosives. And uh, emulsion explosives are basically a commercial explosive. It's one of the more popular explosives that are being used today commercially for mining and blasting. Now back in the old days they were using dynamites and also a, a slurry mixture of ANFO. That's still used today, but typically um, you're seeing more and more of the dynamites be less common. Um, most manufacturers don't even make them anymore today. Um, and what's more common than any other explosive out there as far as commercially is going to be an emulsion explosive. Now what is it, an emulsion explosive? An emulsion explosive is ammonium nitrate and it's mixed with an aluminum powder or aluminum paste. Um, and what happens when you mix those together, that's your oxidizer and your fuel, sometimes they'll mix a nitromethane into it, but the two main ingredients are always going to be ammonium nitrate and uh, uh, aluminum powder. Now, if you think about something called tannerite, which is the targets you shoot and they explode, that is exactly the same thing as emulsions. It's ammonium nitrate in a prill form, and they add aluminized powder to it, uh, and it becomes the exploding target. Now what gets even more interesting, if you look at what terrorists are using throughout the world, they're also using ammonium nitrate with aluminum powder or aluminum paste added to it as a uh, homemade or HME type explosive. So across all spectrums, commercial, um, you know, private sector used for you know, shooting and entertainment, and also for terrorists, the ammonium nitrate and aluminized powder mixtures are extremely common. And this is not new. This has been around for an extremely long time. And also when you start getting to the chlorate ballistic explosives with the, the inorganic explosives, um, those have been around for a very, very long time. Now the issue is, is that your x-ray machines, almost all of them out there, are designed to detect only organic based explosives. Don't ask me why they did this, I have no idea, but I'm guessing because the, the mixtures or ratios, if you start looking at TNT, RDX, PETN, these uh, well-known organic-based explosives, they have a specific density and a specific zeph. And you start look, talking to lab guys who are doing the algorithms for these explosive detection, they like specifics. They don't like something that's got a wide range of detection because when that range gets extremely wide, your false alarm rate starts going to the roof. So if you look at this from a sales and manufacturing perspective and trying to get it to sold to like a TSA, uh, AFSEC, ECAC, anywhere uh, that's going to be using it where they have a lot of people coming through, they don't want a lot of false alarms. So when you start adding uh, explosives or HMEs like the ammonium nitrate and the aluminum powder, you're going to start getting a much wider range or window where those detection algorithms have to be, which is going to create more false alarms. That's the same holds true for your chlorates which push all the way into the green color explosives. Those are not even turn orange. And those are not even addressed on any extra machine. So we're going to look first at the most common explosive out there, which is the ammonium nitrate with the aluminum powder add to it that's used on all spectrums, just like I said. And that the emulsions are the most common explosive out there. Now I'm going to take a couple explosives that fall within the range of where we see um, explosives that are detectable based on the algorithms. This is going to be a stick of dynamite. Dynamites run in a density of about 1.2 all the way up to about 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Almost all of them start around 1.2. You'll see a couple that may run lower than that, uh, but it's very few. Dynamites are actually becoming obsolete and being replaced by the emulsion explosives. Now this one is at 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter, and it has an average effective atomic number, or ZEF, right around 6.9. So most of your organic-based explosives are going to be at the 6.9, 7.1, 7.2 range. Uh, just depends on what the mixture is. So that's a nice tight window for them to develop their algorithms, okay? So I'll we'll run this through the extra machine and we should get a red box around it telling us that the software has identified this as potentially being an explosive material that we need to look at more closely. That's all a red box means. Doesn't mean it's explosives. So it red box it, said suspicious object detected. We're going to look at it, we're going to look to see if there's a detonator inside the red box, go through all your process for alarm resolution. But you see how an organic based explosive automatically detects no problems on their system because that's what they're designed for. We're going to look at another one next, which is nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is a liquid explosive. 
Um, they don't use this anymore. They don't use it to make dynamites or anything like that. It's just way too dangerous. There are a very few mixtures out there that will still use it, but typically, you know, pure nitroglycerin being mixed in with something else is not uh, very common on the commercial side of the house. And we don't see terrorists use this either. They can, it's not hard to make, but they just don't do it. It's dangerous. So this is a simulant. Um, your, your nitroglycerin is going to run around 1.6 grams per cubic centimeter. As far as its density, it's a very dense, it's going to be a very viscous liquid. So like water will slosh around, this stuff will not. Um, so we'll run this through. It should be also within the range where all your organic based explosives are. And it's kind of at the top end. So that's why I used it because it has such high density. Um, and we're going to see if the system can automatically detect this. So we run it through the x-ray, and bam, we get a red box, we get automatic detection. So the system is detecting all of the organic-based explosives that I've thrown at it, okay? So now we're gonna take an emulsion. And now emulsion, as I told you, is an aluminized explosive, most common commercial explosive today, uh, used in the private sector for targets. It's called tannerite, ammonium nitrate with aluminum powder. And the terrorists have been using it for years. They call it ANAL. Don't ask me why they use that acronym. Bomb guys can be kind of weird sometimes. But um, what we're going to show you first is Tobex. Okay, Tobex was actually um, suspected being used in the um, Murray Federal Building bombings um, as, as far as a, a booster for setting off the ammonium nitrate mixture, slurry mixture. Now, Tobex is cap sensitive. It's ammonium nitrate grounded to a powder mixed with an aluminized powder. And it's about a 5% aluminum powder and about 95% ammonium nitrate. It may or may not have some nitromethane, so some other very small ingredients, but the majority is always gonna be ammonium nitrate ground to a powder and then the uh, aluminum powder mixture. Now, most all of these emulsions that you see on the commercial side of the house, and you can go to any one of these um, uh, explosive manufacturing companies and look up their technical data sheets, and it'll show you, um, their safety data sheets will show you what the ratio percentage is, and it's typically never in excess of 5%. I've seen a couple shoot up to about 8%, but most of them are around 5%. So this one is actually at a 5% uh, mixture. It's not real explosives, it's all simulant, but we know exactly what the ZEF is and the density of this material, and it does match um, the actual Tobex product that's out there still on the market today. Now remember, this is the same crap terrorists use. This is the same crap used in Tannerite. This has been around for an extremely long time, and we're gonna run this through this system that we know is designed for organic explosive detection. Ammonium nitrates, it comes up as an organic explosive, but now we've added the aluminum powder, which is an inorganic fuel. And when you do that, you add something that's an inorganic fuel that has a higher ZEF, it's gonna increase the ZEF and the density of this material. So that mixture is gonna be a mathematical calculation now based on what the ZEF and the density of the mixtures you mix together are, and it's gonna come out with a, a higher density and a higher ZEF. The question is, is the most common commercial explosive also publicly used and used by terrorists at a 5% mixture gonna detect on my X-ray that's specifically designed only detect organic-based explosives? Well, let's find out. So we'll run it through the X-ray machine and see what happens. Nothing. It went right through the x-ray machine. So why did it do that? Oh, your x-ray machine's not calibrated. Yes, it is. Okay, I know exactly that my machine's calibrated and the vendors, like if you run a simulant through an x-ray machine, you call the vendor and say, hey, my x-ray's not detecting the simulant. They're gonna say, oh, the simulant's wrong. If it's my simulant, it ain't wrong. Your x-ray is wrong, okay? I know specifically where their detection algorithms um, actually detect. And if, I, if they've changed them within 10 minutes, I can figure it out, okay? It's that easy to do. So on this one, it does not detect this um, higher ZEF, higher density material, or this emulsion explosive. Now I'm gonna zoom into this and try to let you see um, what's going on here. So when you look at the nitroglycerin and you look at this one, you're gonna start seeing a lot more green pixelation inside of this orange than you are over here, and also with the dynamite. So what that means is that green pixelation is, is that this ZEF is starting to go much higher 
than what we saw with the dynamite and the nitroglycerin, okay? And that's the problem. That aluminum powder has pushed it just at 5%, has pushed it out past where this detection algorithm on this system is capable of detecting. It is what it is, okay? And, and the only way you're gonna know that is if you test it with a simulant that literally is dead on accurate, which ours are. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you is I've taken water, and I just want you to get an idea of how adding a, a high ZEF material or higher density material is gonna change how it responds in the x-ray machine. So this is just regular water. There's nothing different about it or anything. We're gonna run this through the x-ray machine. Now this may not alarm because it's pretty thin. There is a size cutoff built in these x-rays for uh, explosive detection. It's a, basically a pixel range centimeter squared. Um, but I'm more concerned about you seeing what the color is, okay? So we're gonna run all these at the same time. This is just regular water. This one is about a 5% mixture with a, a higher ZEF material. This one's a 10% mixture, I actually use salt, okay? So salt kind of runs uh, up in the same area where you see the aluminum powder, maybe not exactly, but it's gonna give me the effect that I want you guys to see here. And this one's gonna be at about 20%. So when you start thinking about terrorists who are making their HME, they're not going to Dino Nobel's website and say, oh, I'm really supposed to put 5% aluminum powder in here. They're putting whatever the hell they want in it, as long as it works. So you can see terrorist mixtures up to 30% aluminum paste or aluminum powder. It's just whatever the guy's mixing it decides he wants to do, okay? Uh, they could be precise, they could be not precise, but the, the reality is, is that the ranges are potentially gonna be much higher um, for the percentage of aluminum powder they put in it than what you're gonna see with the commercial explosives. So we're gonna run all these together. Hopefully they stay on the belt and don't roll all over the place, which they probably will. We'll run all these through together and get an idea of what we're seeing. And this is perfect, what we just saw here. All right, so it got an automatic detection, but it only got an automatic detection on the first two. All right, so we're going to zoom in on this. And when you look at this, you can see the bottom two. The one at the bottom is regular water. This next one is your 5%, and you already can see the green dots starting to show up inside the second one at 5%. The one at 10%, I don't think that one's, well, it may be alarming, it's hard to tell, but at 10%, you're seeing a lot more green pixelation showing up, and then at 20%, it's almost turning green, okay? So literally, with these HMEs, when they're using an ammonium nitrate and an aluminum powder or aluminum paste mixture, if they start getting to the 15, 20% range, as far as their mixture, they're pushing it into where it's gonna start turning green on your x-ray. And our x-rays aren't designed to detect these inorganic explosives. And again, the problem is, is that when you look at the guys in the labs who are developing this stuff, they hate anything that's not precise. So when you start looking at your organic-based explosives like your TNT, REDX, PNTN, all that other stuff, they are very precise in their density and their ZEF. There's no range for that. So that's why they developed all these algorithms based on organic explosives because they know exactly where they're supposed to show up. The problem is when you have a wide range like you do with these emulsions and these ammonium nitrate and luminized powder mixtures, that range gets really big as you can see here. So we're literally going from about seven ZEF all the way up to about 13 or 15 ZEF. And they hate that. And the problem with that is if you try to develop an algorithm based on that, your false alarm rate's gonna go through the roof. And when they put the specs out for these x-ray machines, they say, oh, I only want a 2% false alarm rate. And that just absolutely is why we are only detecting organic-based explosives on these x-ray machines. <coughs> they work great if it's an organic-based explosive, but you have to understand that what the terrorists are using are not specifically organic-based explosives. More and more, we're seeing them use inorganic-based explosives or taking organic explosives and adding an inorganic material like aluminum powder or aluminum paste to it that's just creasing the zap and the density of the material and pushing it outside of your detection algorithm. This is a big problem if you're only relying on this red box to tell you what to do. Let's say with your explosive trace detection system. 
The only time you use your explosive trace detection system is when you get a red box. That's your procedure. Well, guess what? If it's any of the inorganic-based explosives or an organic-based expl uh, organic explosive that's been aluminized, um, you're not going to get a red box, and you're not going to use your ETD, and you're never going to check that um, to make sure there's no threat there. So the problem is, is we've got to get smarter about what type of explosives we're using, and we need to go back to the x-ray manufacturers and tell them, hey, they're using ammonium nitrate mixed with an aluminum powder lunar paste that's pushing it outside the window of your detection. I'm, I need to be able to detect that, and I have to change the algorithms. But the problem there again is the people driving the bus on this are your aviation security elements, and they're all about throughput. They're not looking at this in regards to what these x-rays can and cannot detect based on what the terrorists are actually using. This ain't rocket science, and it's not classified either. Any moron can go do a Google search and figure out what type of explosives the terrorists are putting out there. Hell, the ATF, the FBI actually put out um, data on the type of explosives and stuff that the terrorists are using. Uh, it's all out there. It's easy to figure out. The problem is, is the x-rays don't detect. So if it's organic-based explosive, not a problem. Inorganic-based explosive, problem. Organic-based explosive mixed with an inorganic fuel, like uh, 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 an emulsion or the HMEs that they're using, you're probably not going to get detection. All right? I hope you enjoyed this lesson in regards to emulsion-based explosives or explosives that have mixtures added to them that push them outside of the window of detection. And you can better develop your screening procedures around what your systems actually can and cannot accomplish. Thanks.